Right. Well, in the interest of time, let's let's begin. Um, good morning and uh, or good evening for those of you dialing in from the U.S. Um, and a very warm welcome to our first webinar in our Metric Innovator Asia Pacific Accelerator cohort 2021. My name is Frederick Navig, I'm the managing director here. Um, um, and welcome to those of you joining us on YouTube. We are live streaming this on YouTube for the first 60 minutes, and we will then close it for 30 minutes of uh, Q&A just with our uh, cohort of startups. Uh, before handing over to our, to our, our host um, this morning, let me just um, remind everyone that these webinars will now be held every Wednesday at this time. Um, and um, uh, I wanted also to let you know that the next um, event, uh, Wednesday next week, will be on strategic partnerships and working with multinationals. So do mark your calendars if you have not already done so. So um, with that, I'll hand over to uh, Medtech Innovator CEO, Paul, to um, uh, host us, be, be our host through today's session, Paul. Okay, great. Thank you, Frederick. Um, uh, so hi, everyone. So you've got Frederick, myself, and uh, Sakina Tan here uh, from our team. And uh, I'm going to spend today focusing on how to create a compelling pitch video. Um, so uh, with that, Frederick and Sakina, I think you guys can go ahead and uh, Turn your cameras off. Thank you. Um, and uh, and I'll take it from here. Thanks, Frederick. Um, and thanks, Sakina. So you can go ahead and stop your video. And, and then I'll take it from here. Um, I still see you though, Frederick. <laughs> Maybe it's just on my end. Um, all right. So everyone, we've got uh, terrific um, content for you today. Very excited to uh, tell you a little bit about MedTech Innovator. I'm the CEO. Uh, Paul Grand, MedTech Innovator, is a global accelerator. We are focused on finding the best companies, the best technologies all over the world in the medical field and making sure those innovations actually reach patients. Uh, this webinar series is one of the ways in which we do that. Uh, and one of the great things is that it's a hybrid. We have a combination of our 20 accelerator companies here in the Asia Pacific that are participating in today's webinar and they'll be interactive and asking questions. And we also have the YouTube live audience who's welcome to watch this and share this video with anyone who'd like. Um, now, the only thing is for the YouTube audience, um, if you have questions, you can post them into the chat on the YouTube channel um, and those will be relayed to me here and I'll try and get to those. Um, but for the rest of our cohort, you'll be able to stick around for the last 30 minutes and ask questions. So with that, um, I'm going to take a little bit of time here just to set the stage as to why we're talking about this content today and creating um, and creating a pitch video. So to give you a little bit of context, um, MedTech Innovator, as part of our global program every year, has all of our companies create a one-minute video. We've been doing this since 2013, um, and we found it's an incredibly effective way for companies to tell their story. As I like to say, if you can't tell your your story in one minute, then there's something wrong. Um, now we've all seen presentations get shorter and shorter, commercials getting shorter and shorter, um, and even videos on places like social media get shorter and shorter. We found one minute is a perfect amount of time to tell your story. Um, in that time period, you can really communicate your story in a way that you you can do uh, you can't do even in a five minute or a seven minute PowerPoint presentation, you could do a much better job if you take the time to plan an effective video. Um, and as I mentioned, every year we have our companies create videos. They repeatedly tell us that the most important asset they came out of MedTech Innovator with each year is that one minute video. And even years later, we find the companies are still using those videos on their home pages, on their YouTube channels and social media and other places to describe their company because we, we asked them to design them to be relatively timeless. Um, so we're gonna talk about that a bit today. Um, also for the companies that are part of the MedTech Innovator Accelerator, these videos that they'll be creating will also be used as part of a best video competition that will happen later in our program. Um, so more about that as we proceed in the season, but for those of you watching here on YouTube Live again, 
one of the resources that I'm going to show you is where to find all the videos from our past companies. It's a tremendous resource and a great asset to look at. Um, now, um, as, I've, as I generally mentioned right now, again, the idea here is to make your company look as professional as any other company out there. Um, you want to look like a big company, whether you're a small company or a startup um, with one employee, or whether you have 100 employees or more, you still want to look like you're a professional company telling a strong story. And we're going to tell you how to do that today and give you examples of that. Now, this is our ninth year doing this. Um, and one of the things that's that's really important is that over time, you'll certainly see, if you look at the older videos from companies in our program to the videos that are, that are produced today, you'll see that obviously they've gotten better and better and better in terms of quality and content. Um, animation has gotten easier to do and less expensive. You know, there's been lots of things that have gotten better. But at the end of the day, one thing remains, which is storytelling. Um, and a large part of this is telling a story. And that's something that we're going to capture and talk about throughout this program today. Um, now, one other thing I want to mention as well is that this is actually going to be a two-part series related to this pitch video um, topic. One part is today, and this is in our Asia Pacific program. Um, we're going to cover the general topic. We're going to show some videos from last year's program and talk about them and what makes a good video and why. Um, we're also going to meet one of our alumni uh, and watch their video and talk to them about what it went in, into making their video. Um, and then in two days, we're also going to have a second part, which is part of our U.S. programs, MedTech Innovator Live. Um, and this will be featuring John Weiser, uh, who is a president at Sony Pictures Television, talking about his role and talking about storytelling. One of the things he does is coach people in Shark Tank, um, and he'll tell you what goes into that and what goes into telling a great story. So it's a two-parter. You can watch part one today, and then you can also tune in in a couple of days, and you can watch either live or asynchronously and watch the second part with John Weiser. So for today's um, topic, um, I'm just going to introduce a little more right now, and then I'm going to bring in um, Sebastian Grote as one of our alumni to talk and to share some of their experience as well. Um, so one of the things I did want to set the stage for is that doing these videos does not mean that you have to spend a lot of money. Some people spend zero dollars creating their video, um, and other people spend 5,000 or 10,000 or more creating their video. It's really up to each company. Uh, you do not have to spend any money to create a great video. Some of the videos that we'll be watching today had a budget of zero. Um, and you'll see that they're tremendous. And, and it's incredible really what you can do again with in-house resources and even friends and family or other people who can pitch in to help create these videos. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Before I get to some of the videos, um, I'm going to take a minute here and um, introduce Sebastian. Um, so Sebastian, you can go ahead and uh, turn on your video. Uh, and uh, and we can just talk briefly about your experience. Hi, Sebastian. Great to see you. Hey, how are you going? Hey, great. So um, so maybe before we get into this, we can just take a brief minute. Um, you know, I know your, uh, your title um, uh, over at Excel um, is... is um, uh, well, I, I excuse me. I was going to say I know that your your LinkedIn summary of yourself says award winning <laughs> journalist, um, strategic messaging and storytelling, uh, translating science into business. That was pretty cool as a way of describing yourself. So I thought maybe you could take a moment first, tell us a little bit about Excel as a company, tell us about your role there, um, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me back. Great seeing everyone again today. Uh, it's been it's been a hot minute, so I'm great to be back. Um, Excel is let's start with the company is a clinical stage uh, startup from Singapore, um, and we have found a new way of detecting early stage cancer in a small blood sample, and we achieved that by combining a new rare cell detection technology we developed with our own uh, deep learning AI, and we're creating a kind of integrated ecosystem that's spanning the whole process from deep tech to digital health. And that way we can detect a single cancer cell among 5 billion healthy blood cells in a way that's um, accessible, affordable, and easy to scale. 
And uh, myself, my role, uh, I'm wearing a lot of hats uh, at this current stage. Uh, my main role is um, head of strategy at Excel, but I also cover marketing and communication. Um, I do, in fact, come from a journalistic background, and I think that's something that we probably want to talk a little bit, bit uh, about today, of approaching this in a very narrative and storytelling way. And I think that's where I can add value to the organization and building it going forward. Great, thank you very much. Um, so, with that, that is some some you know general context. Um, why don't we talk uh, a little bit about just generally about storytelling, and then and then I'm going to actually get into your video and, and and the video that you guys produced last year as part of MedTech Innovator. Um, but just generally speaking, you know, you you talked a little bit you know already about storytelling. Um, so for you, let's just kind of like talk briefly about what you think makes a great story. Um, you know, just briefly, you know, what are some of the aspects of a good story? And then we can kind of get into some of the details of, of your video. Um, yeah, what does, what makes a good story? I, to be perfectly honest, as a journalist, I think sim simplicity probably is key. Um, I, I think it was uh, Antoine de saint exupery if I remember this correctly, I haven't prepared, that said, um, you know, a story is perfect when there's nothing to take away from it anymore. So I think, if you can convey something without having to go back to um, some uh, to 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 retort to like um, buzzwords to to um, build a complex story around it, but tell it really simply, I think that's probably the key for me to a good story. And the second aspect is probably to create touch points, to make it tangible, to connect it to people's reality and to not and to take it out of some sort of abstract sphere into something that people can visualize and see themselves in. And I think those two aspects to really make it tangible and to make it simple, I think they're things that intrinsically go against our instincts um, as we build businesses because we want um, I guess our idea to sound complex and intricate and multi-layered which they probably are and then to bring it back and to keep probably certain aspects of the story on the side to concentrate on what's really important that's um, I think that's the big challenge of um, effective storytelling. Yeah, that is a perfect way to introduce this, um, to introduce this topic. Um, I, yeah, I think there was another quote, I think it was Abraham Lincoln or someone who said uh, that uh, uh, if I could have, if I could have taken the time, I'm sorry, I apologize for uh, the length of the letter. If I had more time, I would have made, made it shorter. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. Um, same concept of, of trying to, you know, keep it simple, keep it short. Um, it's it's a, the way you just described the the um, the problem uh, is really true, which is that all of us want to tell these complex stories, and there's so much behind these innovations, and um, and we have to resist the temptation to go into that that detail um, excessively. Um, and so that's the key, I think. You captured it very well. Um, so what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, is I'm going to play your video from last year. Oh. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll we'll analyze a little bit. I'll ask you some questions if that works for you. Sound good? Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Sit back, um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and and play your video. Um, so, so uh, first, let me just um, actually let me do that one more time. Make sure I check the boxes. I did okay. Um, so. So for everyone who's coming to this, this uh, for the first time, you're looking at MedTech Innovator's website right now um, at medtechinnovator.org. At the top, you'll see a couple of things in our nav bar. One's our US program, and then our Asia Pacific program where we are today. Um, under that is the Asia Pacific portfolio of companies, and then our Asia Pacific company videos. Um, so that's where I'm navigating to, which means any of you can do this afterwards. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down over here, um, and the first video that you'll see is the video from uh, Excel, so I'm going to go ahead and play that, and then we'll talk about it. Cancer is everywhere. Everybody knows somebody who is affected by it. Many of us have even lost a loved one. For me as a medical doctor, what has been most frustrating uh, 
is that we could do so much more if we only had a good way of detecting it earlier. For the 200 different cancers, um, there are really only two screening methods that actually work for cervical cancer and for breast cancer. At Excel, this is what we are changing now. Our mission is to detect early cancer in a simple blood sample, accurately and affordably. To do so, we develop three uh, patented technologies and our very own AI. And now this allows us to detect one single cancer cell among five billion healthy blood cells, including cells which were previously uh, considered undetectable. This has never been achieved before. In the end, it is not just the technology that counts, it is getting it to the people. All right, so let's stop there. Uh, so first of all, great video, terrific job. Um, uh, so what I wanted to do was take a little bit of time, um, first of all, and just, maybe I'll start off just by kind of recapping what I, what I observed in your video. Uh, some things that I think make it a really great video. So when we, we start there, and then I'm going to ask you some questions, right? Um, so firstly, um, one of the things that I really love is that um, you you start off with footage, you know, that's that's visual, that's kind of telling you a little bit about what we're looking at here, which is something to do with diagnostics and blood samples, and we're seeing that, and we hear the voice of the founder um, and CEO Sebastian talking um, over that. So, you know, we're hearing a voice that we're gonna meet in a minute, but we're hearing someone narrating and it's a founder. Um, and, and I love that because it creates kind of that personal connection right away. So I think there's one element that I love about this is the personal connection um, that we have to the CEO right away. Um, and, and then we meet him on screen, which is great. And he starts talking and he says, you know, cancer is everywhere. We all know someone who's affected. Uh, maybe even we've lost a loved one. So again, re, you know, continuing that personal connection which I think again, you know, is really is really great. So I now have already, I'm already, I'm already starting to feel like I'm thinking to myself, and maybe even I'm empathizing, you know, in some way in a personal connection. Um, and then the second thing is that he he introduces himself as a medical doctor, uh, and so that's the credibility component. I love that. I think that's a really important element for these videos is credibility, um, and I think that was a really good choice to do that. And he starts talking. Um, and he lays out the problem immediately and says, you know, what's frustrating for me as a doctor um, is that we could do so much more if we had a good way of detecting um, disease. Um, and, and so now I'm going, wow, as a doctor, I understand, okay, this is a doctor, he's credible. And he's telling me that there's not a good way of detecting disease. We're only good at breast cancer, I think, and cervical cancer. Is that, that's right, I think. Um, and he even goes on and says, of 200 cancers, there's only two that we're good at. Um, and that now at Excel, our mission is to is to um, detect cancers really simply and um, in small blood samples accurately, affordably. So he tells like the whole the whole little story right there. And one little, you know, he summarizes the mission um, of what you're trying to do quickly. Um, and he gets into kind of the uniqueness. He says, you know, um, we've we've developed uh, three patented technologies and our own AI. So now I know there's AI involved, there's patented technology. So now I've got uniqueness. Um, he even tells a little more about the solution. We can detect one cancer cell among billions of cancer cells. And, um, and then he gets a differenti differentiation and saying, you know, this has never been achieved before. So it's unique, it's differentiated. Um, and he kind of aspirationally talks about like, you know, helping to, you know, eliminate cancer. So it's this like, it, and that's it, it's one minute. And that's the, you know, I, it's told me the story. It's got all those those components. So I just, that's my general summary of as I analyze your video. Um, and uh, so I think just generally speaking, you know, you guys did an amazing job of telling a story um, very quickly. So congratulations on it. Yeah, uh, and, and so now I want to get into kind of, let's start off with just kind of that script that I just mentioned a minute ago, kind of the walking through this. You know, I, I, obviously, it seems like you prepared a script. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And and who wrote that script? Was that you? Was that a team of people? Who was involved in that? Yeah, I mean, so it was me in the beginning, but then we kind of collaborated on it. I think, I think you've really picked apart what it's all about. I think that the key is really, as, as you notice, like every word in that minute-long video has been weighed up for its impact. I think that's 
that's really important to know because we only have that minute. So everything that you say has to convey multiple messages, right? So you want to create a personal connection, but you also want to establish a professional profile. You, um, you want to, um, I guess, explain the scope of the solution, but also bring it down to someone's personal area of experience and uh, family and life experience. So um, what we did was, um, I mean, we kept it really simple in a way, right? We created, I created a storyboard um, that um, I then put up on Google Docs and we had a couple of sort of dry runs where people read it and commented. Uh, and with people, I mean, it was just me and Sebastian, our founder and CEO. And I think that's also important, you know, to not have too many cooks spoiling the broth because you have so many, um, I guess, viewpoints on what's important if you come from different departments and different angles. And as I said before, there are so many stories to be told, especially in a company like ours. You know, we've got a hardware team that does engineering or software people. We've got AI people. We've got uh, uh, biochemists. We've got all sorts of people in the team, right? So um, we collaborate on, on this in, in just the two of us, really, um, by a lot of Zoom sessions. And there was a lot of, I guess adjustment in a very in a very simple way. So I can I can create something, but for me, I think what's important to get across also to the new cohort is whoever's presenting it has to come from them. It has to be their words and it has to be their beliefs. Um, so I can only ever build a framework, but then I have to sort of workshop with Sebastian as to how would he say something? What is what is he comfortable with? What is authentic for him? Because for us, authenticity as a brand is everything. If you're in healthcare and people don't trust you, then you will not succeed. So for us to be genuine and authentic was really important. And for me, it was important to not create a storyline that would just go against the grain of how Sebastian feels as a person. So I think on a content level, I could really set the scene and see these are the key points that I want to convey. But you know, then we really broke it down to like single word level. Like, you know, if an adjective would be something that he'd be saying, would that be, you know, the word you choose in an everyday conversation? I like it. I like the, and I like the, the advice to not have too many cooks. Um, I know I've seen lots of people make that mistake. Uh, and, and it's, it's hard too, because, you know, you are, as you said, you know, you're representing the brand and your company and what you're about and, um, and there's a lot of people, perhaps in a company, depending on the number of employees, who feel like they're part of that. So, you know, it's important, I think, though, to stay, as you said, authentic and and keep and keep that part relatively tight. I guess if I can if I can jump in there just for one second, yeah. Yeah. Long, I think it's important to do your homework first as a company, as a brand. You know, whether you whether you're the CEO or the marketer, you just approach from different angles. But you know, to understand what you want to be as a, as a brand, as an organization, what your goals are, why you're doing what you're doing, what you're actually trying to achieve, uh, and to also understand sort of your space, the language of your space, and then sort of, I guess, position yourself very consciously um, with your message, with your vocabulary in the niche that you, that you identified. I think that's really important. So for us, it's also coming from a point of having gone through the motions and having done our homework that we then can build on certain things. So we know what the core messages we want to convey. We know what our kind of keywords are, what our vocabulary is. Um, we know what we want to be and what we don't want to be. As I said, you know, we place huge emphasis on, on uh, personal connectivity and on authenticity, for instance. Um, and I think when you come from that point, it makes then the sort of the, the work on the topic a little bit easier than having to build everything from scratch the moment you come to that point. Right. No, that's a good way. Of, that's a good um, a good way of digging into that a little more. Thank you. So, um, so maybe then talk a little bit about um, Sebastian um, and the other Sebastian. Um, your, uh, you know, your your co-founder and CEO. So uh, was it challenging for him to be on camera? Uh, you know, he was the narrator and he was on camera. Was that something that you guys had to do multiple times? Was that easy? What was that like? 
it started off a bit stiff, absolutely, and we um, we had to do it a couple of times. It, we also did it in COVID times, right? So we're all in different parts of the world, which didn't make it easier. So you couldn't just jump in and say, you know, take a break, let's, you know, come back in five minutes and do it again. Um, but um, I was lucky enough to have someone on the ground to kind of produce and to, to sort of be there and take away all the admin and all the, you know, looking at the script and, and checking out lighting and all these kind of things. So we had certain roles that were covered. So Seb could just focus on just, just being himself. Um, and yeah, we probably did five or six takes. Absolutely. So, and I also, you can't expect someone to be camera trained on the one hand, but I also think you don't necessarily need to be. Um, I think one of Seb's biggest strengths is apart from being a brilliant scientist, that that he is a very authentic and approachable person. So you also don't want to overcoach it. So you want to keep him as accessible and authentic as he is, and then just make him feel comfortable in telling his story. I think that's probably, yeah, again, sort of it's a bit of a journalistic approach. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to overproduce. We don't want to over smoothen everything. It has to be tangible. And people you know, for, for my part, I'm happy for people to see that he's a real person that, you know, stumbles or that um, hesitates. I think that adds a degree of just genuineness to it. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, one thing I want to make sure I, I point out for our companies that are attending today, um, and I know all of you are on, I can see you in the attendee list. Um, if you have questions as we're going, if you have comments or things you want me to ask Sebastian as we're going, you could just put them in the in the either the chat um, or in the Q and A. If it's a question that you want me to ask um, towards the end, you could put them into Q and A. If it's something that you want me to interrupt, kind of with and and clarify, you can do that in the chat. So I'll, I'll keep an eye on both of those as we're going. Um, all right, so so uh, so Sebastian, so going back to this, then you know. By the way, not everybody has you. Not everyone has a someone who's focused on marketing, perhaps in the organization. Um, would you say that um, you know that you feel like that's um, that's unique in your organization, or that's something that's different? As you, I mean, maybe in other organizations that you know, do you feel like they all have someone who's who's in your role, or, or people at least at your level, um, or do you? Because I can tell you that from my experience, a lot of these companies. It's just, you know, a couple engineers and, you know, maybe a clinician or it's, you know, just a bunch of engineers and they don't have a, a person who's got your kind of marketing background. Um, so, uh, so is that something, you know, when, and by the way, when did you join the company? Were you there from the very beginning? Um, give me that quick, quick nugget. Uh, I joined Excel when it um, started to raise seed money. So Seb did a lot of the groundwork and sort of establishing the technology and then going out to collect seed money and really sort of refining the product. Um, that's when I joined. So um, I was, I think I was the first international employee other than sort of local um, staff in Thailand where we have our R&D center. Yeah. Right. And, and by the way, you mentioned before about having this, you know, you're doing this during COVID. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and producing in different places. So were you, so you physically weren't in the same place along with the team who was, who was recording. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we made a very conscious decision to kind of split up during the crisis. So we had people in Singapore um, where head office is. We had people in Thailand where our R&D center is. And then the plan for 2020, 2021 was to open uh, a European subsidiary. So uh, myself and our CEO actually went to Europe and just stayed there for a year to set up that new organization and onboard new staff there. So, um, and right now I'm in Australia actually uh, talking to yeah. you. So um, I haven't been home in like a year and a half, I think now. Wow. Uh, so yeah, it's that's certainly been a challenge. And to answer your first question, Absolutely. It's, it's very, I think it's, it's a very different approach to have someone like me early on in the organization, um, especially given that my previous job was essentially, uh, so um, I was managing editor at a publishing house, right? So my job as a business journalist was to literally, I guess, investigate why businesses are running well or why they're not running well and then distill it down to a story. So obviously this, is, this has been my area of expertise in a way. But what I've experienced over time is that that deep understanding and the creativity that's in everyone. And I think, um, you know, you can almost sort of line out like a, a number of core items, like, you know, of things that you want to, that you want to cover, basis you want to cover 
going into building your, your organization um, that doesn't necessarily require someone that does this professionally. It just requires some sort of guidance as to these are questions that you want to, that you want to, I guess, discuss with yourself and have a good answer to. That's great. Thank you. So, so coming back to this, this particular video, one of the questions we had in uh, from the cohort already is, is it expensive to produce a video like yours? So, you know, do you have a ballpark idea of what this particular video costs you to produce? I think this one was 1500 US dollars, something like that. Yeah, All see, it, it looks it looks like a lot more. <laughs> I'll say that. But this it's, 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 yeah, I was gonna say it's super high quality, but these days you don't need to spend a lot of money to produce a video, right? So, um, yeah, so maybe like, what would just summarizing briefly of those fifteen hundred hard dollars? Um, where do you think the dollar part of it went? Uh, so um, we we had a video producer um, in Bangkok that um, has been referred to us. Um, I think that's on a side note a very important takeaway that um, I've learned the hard way to only work with personal referrals. Um, so if, if possible, um, I'd always say, you know, find someone in the space that can, you know, show you um, uh, the direction that can recommend people to work with. I think that saves you a lot of money and time. Um, and then it's just been a one man uh, production. So we actually um, worked with a videographer that does um, news reports uh, for the BBC and other programs. Uh, on Southeast Asia and it happened to be COVID and they weren't so busy. So we, we asked them to, um, I guess, come in, support a startup and, you know, just, it was a one, one man production, if you will, right? So um, a bit of equipment um, obviously went into the final sum in terms of, you know, lighting um, and uh, uh, camera equipment, um, but it was mostly just man hours really. And I guess the whole prep work and these kind of things has all been handled internally. So uh, yeah. luckily we were um, able to cover that into in-house yeah. and, and how about uh editing did you do that in-house as well or did he did your outside producer do that yeah so they they edited um the video um and it was a really good process i guess again sort of to keep costs and uh, i guess your man hours uh under control um you can um you, you can cover a lot of those bases by preparing well um, so we had a, a kind of shooting plan laid out. So I had like little scenes and I was saying, you know, when he says this sentence, we're going to do um, a close up. And in this sentence, we're going to zoom out. And in this sentence, we're going to be in the lab. So there were locations, there were camera angles, they were pretty clear, um, uh, uh, I guess, instructions as to, as to how to put it together in the end. So that was a really straightforward process after having, you know, prepared some, put some work yeah. into it. And as you said, you scripted it. So the, the locations, the angles, all that stuff, was that also all part of the script as well and the storyboard? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So the main idea of this was obviously to, um, to show people that we're the real deal and this is actually happening, right? So for me, um, as a journalist, it was very obvious to, to, to share um, what's, what's there in the background instead of keeping it on this very abstract level that healthcare can be, you know, there, there is a lab, it, there is work being done. There is a physical instrument that's being used. Um, there is, you know, a person in a white lab coat that actually happens to run around, you know? So for us, it was a no brainer to say, let's use this and make it as real as possible with the real people that are doing it in the actual lab where it's happening. Yeah. Now, not everyone can do that. Not everyone has that, you know, that ability. And um, we tell people sometimes, you know, we always tell people start with the real people. If you can show us yeah. the team, we want to see. That was another element you had. I didn't mention in your footage that you had in the background, but you had real people working. You had, I saw, you know, Seb, Sebastian was up there in front of some other team members talking and it, it felt like a team. Um, which I think is also a really important thing because you can't have the whole team talking in your video, but you can convey a little bit more about the, the team and the real people. Um, so I always tell people, try and do that. If you can incorporate your team, um, incorporate real footage uh, in companies that have patients and, you know, in, incorporate patients. Like let's actually see the real patients when there's patients who are involved. I love, I love seeing that too. Um, uh, and, and sometimes people don't even have that. So I'll say like, go ahead and use stock footage. Uh, you know, you can, you can pull from this lots of great stock footage um, that kind of, 
is is giving you a sense for what it is that you're trying to communicate. Uh, but I really like that you guys were able to actually use real footage um, of your lab, of your team, you know, right. of those things. Um, so that, that's really great. And as you said, again, these were in, you were all in multiple locations. So, you know, you were doing this remotely. Um, I'm just curious, were you watching, I guess, in some way, were you remotely watching the shooting with someone like holding up a phone or something for you to watch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was there. It was like 3 a.m. or something where I was. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, but but to be honest, I think, yeah, we things went relatively smoothly. I have to say, I, I didn't make any corrections. I just was just curious to see all the setup and everything else, right? Because it is, you know, it is an exciting uh, production nonetheless, even though it's just a short video, you know, and even though it's only a couple of thousand dollars for us, every expense that, you know, we divert from research has to be justified in a way, right? So it was still exciting to see. Yeah. Um, how about things like the music? Um, you know, the, the music, was that something you just, uh, some stock, some stock music? Yeah. Was there yeah. Yeah. So um, that was, that was just, um, you know, we go, you go through a couple of options and again, you know, you've got a, we have a very clear idea of who we want to be as a brand. And we've got sort of a bunch of, I guess, sort of um, adjectives and a bit of sort of a blurb on that so you know being able to sort of pass it on then to the editor and say like this is us you know do you have something that would kind of represent that it makes it really easy and straightforward so um, luckily um uh rob our videographer in bangkok um, was very very quick to sort of catch up on who we want to be and then find something that has a bit of a drive but also a bit of a um i guess restraint you know, you can't forget. So my weird accent is I'm half, uh, I'm born and raised in Germany and Seb is half German. And so there's, there's always a bit of that, I guess, sort of restraint with us. And we don't want to, we don't want to over promise and, and we'd rather um, under promise and over deliver. So we're trying to be as ambitious as we can, whilst also being very grounded and very sincere. So um, other, maybe other tools you guys use, any other tools or props or things that that, that made this whole process easier for you. You mentioned before doing a storyboard in Google Docs. So you didn't have any fancy software for that, um, but were there any other, and again, you had somebody, a video professional videographer in this case who had probably, who brought his own lighting and equipment, yeah. but any other tools that you use that help make this process easy for you? Yeah, let me think. Um, in terms of hard, for the one minute video, um, we, uh, we didn't, use any any fancy equipment for we did also a five minute version video obviously a five minute version for the medtech innovator program and um for some scenes we actually used a, a teleprompter mm. um and that was um because we had to reshoot something um because of a technical uh, issue and sebastian was coming in and out of meetings and didn't have time to really sort of i guess internalize um the words and he was very nervous and to kind of like calm him down we rented this teleprompter um, which is just you know a system that you connect to your computer and it effectively um it shows it around or under the screen i don't even know because i wasn't there physically um but yeah so it ended up being a tool that we that pretty much just gave sebastian the assurance that if something would go wrong he'd have something to fall back on um, and we used that for a couple of scenes um but other than that it was very straightforward so um again that in terms of tips and tools, I think the best tool is to take your time in preparing. It's a great, great, great tip. Um, yeah, fortune favors the prepare, right? So um, yeah, any any way you can prepare and over prepare for something like this will help. Um, uh, how how long would you say the whole process took from start to finish? Um, do you how much time do you think you put into creating the videos? And as you said, you actually did two. You did a five minute version and a, a one minute version, but what would you say if you had to estimate? Well, with, with, with all the back and forth and obviously the delays and everything, I, re I reckon maybe like just maybe a week or two. So it was it was a lengthy process and obviously it has to work around schedules as well. And um, as I said, it's a working lab that we're filming there as well. So it has to work around the schedule of people actually doing their work and, and, and having um, experiments on the go. Um, as well, right, that have certain incubation times and where you have to act at certain points. So there was always an, a bit of a, of a balancing act. Yeah. So it's, it's certainly not a, it's certainly not a quick one. Yeah. Well, I, I've talked, I mean, in my experience, again, we've had, you know, yeah. what, 
300 plus of these videos that our companies have done to date. Um, and we've seen everything from people doing these in a couple of days to a week to two weeks. You know, I think that kind of a timeline is, is probably pretty reasonable. Um, and again, it's not your full-time job in that time period. There's, as you said, there's other stuff going on. The work is continuing. Um, but I think that's probably a good duration. So I, I always tell people, don't leave your video for the last minute. If it's, if it's due and, you know, on August 15th, don't start it on August um, 10th, um, you're going to be in trouble. Um, so I think, I think it's a good, a good idea to budget a couple of weeks time at least, um, to, you know, for this process. Um, are there any tips that you have in terms of what you would do differently now that you've done, you've done this, it's behind you, it's in the rearview mirror, like, is there anything that you would do differently now if you were to do it again? Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe on the, on the longer video, I'd be a bit more ambitious maybe. So we have, I think sometimes we do come across a little bit sort of restrained. And I think if I look at the industry at large um, and especially in America, um, there is a certain sort of grandeur to some things maybe that, you know, we're with our background sort of, I guess, stay, stay away from. So sometimes I would hope that, you know, that we, that we're a bit more out there um, in terms of wording. And I would certainly work a little bit more Sebastian on the, on the, uh, on just getting used to the camera. Um, what we did in the five minute video is that we had um, uh, a local um, just say, yeah, run everything around the day essentially. So Sebastian could really just sit down. I think that's um, and, and just focus on what he wants to do. I think that's, um, I would have done this from day one. Um, and uh, yeah, then there's little things um, like the, fir the first video we, we um, didn't ask people to leave the room as we were shooting. And I think it was it created a really nervous tension in, in, in shooting it. Um, so, um, yeah, little things. But to be honest, overall, I think um, once you've uh, I can I can only ever sort of, I guess, reiterate to, to do your homework and, and to really understand who, what you're about. And, and as you said, don't leave, this is an asset that you're building, right? You, you're investing in it, you're doing it, so you may as well do it properly because it'll help you uh, perfect your pitch. It really forces you to think about what you are and what you can be. Um, and, it, and it's something that you, if you do it well, you can reuse, um, even if you just want to send someone like, you know, a quick snippet or something and see like, you know, I'd love to, hear, I'd love to talk to you. This is what we do, you know, click on this link. Um, I think... I think to take it to take it serious, to do your homework, um, that's probably the most important thing. And then find a good videographer, um, ideally by referral, um, that can handle the technical part. If you're not well versed with it, I think that makes a huge difference. For us, video was very scary in the beginning, um, and I think having someone that could just take the technical worry out of it, and we could work just just think about story, made a huge difference. Great. No, that's extremely helpful. Um, I know. I think. I think you know. You've given us a lot of really great, a lot of really great tips. A lot of you know, good ways of thinking about how you approach this. You know, as a company. Um, I you know. I think the the timeless aspect of this is something that I mentioned in the beginning, but that you know your video really does well because whether you've raised two million dollars, ten million dollars, a hundred million dollars, it's not mentioned in the video. Um, and you know, you know, you're not you're not talking about how much you're trying to raise. You're not talking about um, where you are necessarily in the product development. You're just a, you know, talking about the problem. You're talking about your solution. What makes you unique? Um, you know, kind of the you know the the call to action, if you will. You know, all those things. I mean, those are all incorporated, but yet there is no there's nothing in there where you go, oh, we've changed that now. We can't we can't talk about that anymore. You know, you're still the basic the basic components of what you're doing, whether it's two years from now um, or next week are still relevant. So, you know, I, I, again, you know, kudos to you for, uh, for the way you guys did that. You chose the, the words very carefully and, and made some really great decisions. So it was, it was, th thank you for the opportunity. I think it was something that really pushed us and that really made us think about our value proposition very hard. And I think um, as an exercise, it was, it lifted the whole organization to the next level. So um, I think it was really, really valuable for us. Excellent, good. Um, well, what I'm gonna be doing, because we have we have about 15 minutes left for this first hour, mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna to get to Q and A with the cohort. 
So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to I'm going to play a couple of the other videos from some of the other companies from last year, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what I what I liked about them. Um, you're welcome to stick around. You can turn your camera off if you want, um, but I'm going to go do that, and then I'll have you come back on for the for the Q and A at the uh, at the uh, the hour mark. So in 13 minutes no from problem. now. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me. That sounds good. And if you you're going to be in the background, so if you just turn your camera off and turn off your sound. Here. But if you want to comment, you know, drop a note to me in the chat and I'll be happy to bring you back up at, at, at any point after any of the videos. All right. Michelle, thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, really helpful. Um, OK, so um, uh, hopefully you guys all really appreciated um, that and uh, the opportunity to hear from someone who was behind one of the, the top videos from from our program last year. And you can really see what what makes it so special um, as an organization is the authenticity that went into that and that. They really, really thought about who they were and what they wanted to represent. You know, they chose the words very carefully. Um, and so I think that's really important. Something that I also mentioned um, as we were talking is, is the idea of a patient story. Now, this particular video did not include a patient story, and that's just fine. Uh, but in some examples, it can be very effective to include a patient journey as well. Um, so I'm going to show a couple other videos, and some will have that as well in there. Um, and then as we come back after the hour mark, um, we'll get back into some more questions um, for Sebastian um, from our cohort. Um, but so let me go ahead um, then and share my screen again and play just a couple more videos for you. So um, the next one that I'm going to show you uh, is from a company that's called Healthy Networks. Um, I'll let them tell the story in this video, um, and then I'll, I'll give you some comments on it. When my baby daughter started coughing badly, we were terrified. We had no way of getting a quick diagnosis to know what to do. Flower-related diseases are the second leading cause of death in the world. Unclear or untimely diagnosis is a huge issue. If you have a respiratory problem, a doctor will listen to your lungs. But a human ear is not precise, and doctors are not always accessible. That's why we created LungFast, the world's first low-cost, A-powered app and stethoscope that lets you detect deadly lung conditions early. Enabling people to make educated decisions, LungFast explains the sounds detected and probable conditions, allowing you to get the right treatment at the right time. It is the next leap in pulmonary technology, allowing doctors and individuals to catch threatening conditions early. LungFast. Your lungs speak. Listen. All right, so uh, the company, as I mentioned, is called Healthy Networks. The product is called Lung Pass. Um, and so it's branded that way in the video. Uh, so, you know, there's a number of things I really like about that one. As you saw in that video, they chose to go heavily into the patient visuals. Um, so you're seeing both people who are affected by um, lung disease who are coughing, and you can kind of get the sense of the problem while they're while the narrator, who is the CEO, by the way, and that's something that I really, again, really want to emphasize that if you can have your CEO as the prime person in the video, please do. I think it makes a really um, big impact to have that connection. So it was great to see Helena there um, in the video. Um, and she's also telling a personal story about how her, her, um, her baby had this problem. And that, that's one of the things that drove her to create this company. So you're seeing her story, you're seeing lots of different patient visuals throughout, um, people who are affected by lung disease. Um, and then you're seeing people with it, you see their device. So they explain what the device is briefly. They show the device actually being used. Um, something that Sebastian said that's repeated in this video um, is he wanted people to understand that it's real, that it's tangible, that it's real, that this is a real thing. Um, and something that I can't emphasize enough for you is that um, investors, and others who are watching your video and thinking about your company are always very skeptical as to whether or not your product is real. Um, and if it's not real, that's fine. And you can tell us that kind of aspirationally, this is what we're building um, at our company. Um, but if it's real, if it is a real product, show us the real product. Um, and there are many, many times that people don't do that. 
um, and they'll barely show the product. They might have people talking about it, but they really won't show the product. Here we got to see the product, which is a physical device that can be placed on the patient's chest. Um, we got to see the app that's associated. So we also know it's a digital company. So we got a lot of things out of this video. Again, one minute long. Um, there was also, again, a call to action at the end that, that compelled us to be part of this journey. And, and I got that from both of these videos, from both um, the first videos we saw from Excel um, and from Healthy Networks Lung Pass. I got the same kind of, I felt like I want to be part of the journey as I watched this video. So really important things to think about um, as, you're, as you're creating your video, that, that a goal for you, if you play this video for other people, the impact should be that they say, wow, I just, I just want to help. How can I be part of this? How can I be, you know, help you on your journey? So that should be an aspirational goal for all of you as you're creating your videos. Um, all right, let me quickly show you another video um, and give you a couple more comments on this. I'm only going to do a couple more of these, um, but they're so good. I wish I could show you all of them. Um, and, uh, and as I said, we have years and years of these videos. Um, so let's go ahead next then um, to a video from um, EWUSOFT. Did you know that oral conditions affecting nearly 3.9 billion people are the most prevalent conditions in the world? However, there is a growing inequality in access to dental services, especially in developing countries. This is in part due to the limited number of available clinics, as well as the absence of dental specialists in developing countries. So how can we bridge this disparity? We at EUSOFT believe that the answer is in innovation, be it using AI to help locate the smallest cavities or planning surgeries based on virtual simulations. Technology can empower dentists in providing an equal level of care. USOF currently offers our dental imaging software to dentists in more than 90 countries to help provide patients with the care they need. Bridging Innovation and Dentistry USOF All right, so again, you know, very different video, um, I think you would say, if you've been watching these. So, um, so in USOF, um, as you saw, you know, we started off again with these images of patients and people going, you know, with their mouth. We can all empathize with that, right? Anyone, whether you're um, an investor, a patient, anybody, you can empathize with that. Uh, we all had toothaches, right? So, you know, you see a bunch of people with grimacing in their faces. So that was really compelling. You know, immediately you pull in, you know, I know this is a company having to do with my teeth. Um, the founder comes on again. So we had the founder to talk and the CEO, and he's telling us the story and telling us, about the problems. Um, they did something in this video as well that Healthy Networks did was um, numbers up on the screen. One of the things I always recommend is that if you have numbers that you want to talk about, large numbers, put the number up on the screen. Um, you don't have to go into huge detail. Maybe it's just if it's 5 billion, you could just say 5B or 5 billion um, if you'd like, but don't put tons of information on the screen. Keep it simple. Um, so they put some basic numbers there. They had a little more as we started talking about dentistry and the availability of technology, and they kind of put a list out there, but I think they did that on purpose to show you um, the, some of the lack of, of, uh, of technology and available. So, but they had, you know, some stats and things on the screen, which I think were very effective. Um, again, they talked about their solution, what they're trying to achieve. Um, they talked about, now they did give some data in this one where they talked about the percentage of, um, of countries that have their technology. They talked about their penetration. So in that case, it wasn't totally timeless because if you watch this video a year later, they would go, oh wait, we're now at 50% or 60%. So one thing you might consider um, is not putting in your current penetration or your current um, exact state of, you know, you wouldn't say in three months we'll be in the clinic because if you watch this video three months later, it's no good anymore. Um, so you could talk about, you know, soon you could either just say like, you know, you know, if you know it's going to be a year from now or something, you could say, you know, um, something about the impact that you plan to have once you're in patients, um, or you could, you know, you could just say it more gener generically so that it's um, without going, without saying we are in patients, we're not in patients. Um, you could just say, here's the, you know, the, what the impact will be on patients. Um, and just say it kind of more matter of factly um, would be a way of doing that. Or if you're a company that isn't going to be in the clinic for three years, 
that's fine. You can say, you know, we're we're on the path towards towards entering the clinic, um, and that will be accurate for at least the next three years or whatever the period of time. Is. Um, so you can make your choices based on on kind of where you are in your stage. But again, lots of patient visuals. You know, I think that was that was extremely effective. Um, you know, and again, so one of the things I want to make sure I'm conveying here is that there are some basic elements to telling a story. Um, you want to do everything you can to make sure you get these in. You want to have, you know, either, you know, your name, if you're in the video, um, your name and, you know, and your title, if you want to say it, or you don't have to say, I'm the, you can either say I'm the CEO, if you want to do that, um, or you can just let the title on the screen say it, but you should certainly have both. Um, you want to tell us what the problem is. So make sure you state that clearly what the problem is that you're solving. You don't even have to say the problem is, just talk about it, either one. Um, you wanna make sure you tell us who this, this problem affects. And so as you're telling it verbally, show us some visuals as we, we saw in these videos to explain what the problem is and who's being affected. Um, you can also tell us if it's, um, if it's a large market. You, know, you can tell us without having to be specific about your company and where you fit into things, you can just say, this is a market that affects 300 million people a year or a million people or, or 50,000, whatever the number is, but you can tell us the size of the market. If it's a growing problem, tell us it's a growing problem um, and then get to your solution. At XYZ company, you know, we are developing blah, 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 whatever it is. Um, and show us again, show us what you're developing, show us your technology. Um, if it's not finished, you can show us a version of your technology as it stands today. Um, and then you can show us where you're going, show us a rendering of your technology, um, or just show us the rendering. You know, you can make the choice, but if you want to show people that it's real, show us whatever you can. It doesn't have to be finished to show somebody holding it to someone's chest or something else. You know, you can you can do that effectively either way. But definitely, if you're if you're very early in your development, you can show us some an early version of your technology, and then side by side, show us a rendering of where you're going with the solution. Again, that makes it a little bit less timeless, but that's okay. You can always produce an updated video once your, your solution is actually finished. Um, make sure you cover what makes it unique and differentiated. Super important, you know, tell us why your technology is unique um, and what makes it special and whatever that, whatever that means. Again, just tell us, maybe show us a little bit of it at the same time on the screen. Um, we don't wanna just see a talking head, make this visual, it's a video. Um, but do show us your team. You know, that's something you can you can cut to kind of that that scene where you've got it, you're in front of a whiteboard drawing in front of people, or you're in a lab at a bench and people are working, or if you're a doctor, you're in the clinic with a patient, you know, just show us, show us your team, show us some people. Um, weave the patients in as much as you can throughout the story. This is a patient journey. I would always end with a call to action for, you know, join us in our, I hope you'll join us in our mission to improve patients' lives and be specific about what patient population, include all those things um, and you'll be very effective, especially if you can include a call to action some way that, that calls for people to be involved. It doesn't have to be expensive to produce a video. Some of the best videos we've ever had in our competition have cost nothing. Um, and even some of the best, like the one you just saw um, from Excel cost $1,500 and they produced two videos in that time period. So it's really, um, it doesn't have to be expensive um, but it is something that you should involve your team with. Um, again, from the, the branding exercise up front to the actual production, you're gonna have different team members involved. It is a great team building exercise to have people involved. I've seen people have the, one, of the, one of the companies shot a video of their team playing soccer um, during, the, uh, during the, the, um, one of their team, you know, um, team building events that they, they do regularly. So they film that and they use that as the way to introduce the team. And you saw people running up to the ball or running with the ball. However you choose to do it, you know, make this a team effort. It's something that I think you'll really enjoy and will pay off in, in many, many ways. So that's our, um, our first part of this, uh, this series. So this is our Asia Pacific MedTech Innovator Live um, video. Um, you'll be able to find this on our YouTube channel as well. If you go to our website at medtechinnovator.org slash APAC live, um, you'll find all of the videos that are part of this series. Um, you'll also, if you go to medtechinnovator.org slash live, you'll find the equivalent videos that are part of our U.S. program. And as I mentioned, in two days, we're going to have part two um, of this uh, best video series with John Weiser 
um, from Sony, who will be talking about his experience again, um, and we'll look at some other videos and, and do something very similar. So I hope you'll join us for that as well. Again, you can watch that offline. You don't have to watch it in real time if the hours are not convenient for you. So I hope to see you again. Um, for those of you on YouTube, please come back to medtechinnovator.org slash APAC live. We'll be doing this every week at the same time. Um, and we look forward to your participation. If you provide um, any questions in the chat, we will try and get to those during the video. Um, thanks a lot. Again, looking forward to seeing you all soon. Um, and uh, have a great day for those of you on YouTube, for those of you in our cohort.